Welcome back to World and Economica. Weird things happened at the beginning. I had things I had to deal with, whether or not to continue the playthrough. I am continuing because I really want to see where the story goes. But despite Yoshi being a fucking idiot, all right. Okay, let's let's see where this goes. All right, where we last left off, we on, let's, let, let me sum up. Okay, so I'm on the moon. Cool. Science fiction stuff. Cool. Infrastructure of the city. Cool. Um, the way gravity works here. Cool. Do I wish there was a movie? Do, do I wish this is made into a live action movie or anime? Yes. I would love to see this. this a few things edited out and changed. Yes. But yes. Uh, do I... Do I like it so the story so far? Yes, despite the thing that Yoshi said. So let's uh, continue on with this. Okay, okay, let me recap the the main story. Okay, I'm on the moon. I ran away from home. Uh, somebody else is stealing that that has my uh, similar build. So he's like the person who's uh, doing crazy crap, and I'm gonna get blamed for is also has a backpack, is 15, and is running around stealing people's stuff. Okay, and then uh, I ran away from the cops twice, but this lady helped me out. But she put a tracking device on me, and then told me if I had a if I had a place to stay. That then she took me to church, where uh, Jeebus is here. Let's uh, do the thing. Also, I tackled a girl. Right. Welcome to the Sixth Avenue Church. Lisa said this to me while I was still in shock. You're a Christist? Not a Christ, not a Christist, a Christian. I thought that was something they only did on Earth. That's interesting. This was supposed to be a place on the forefront of science and human achievement. Yeah. Like Bioshock. Why is why was there a church here? Or could it be that for people from Earth, this place far away in the sky was supposed to be heaven? As I looked at Lisa as if she were some exotic animal, she gave a slightly embarrassed grin and shook her head. Well, I suppose you would say that, but don't worry, I'm not going to try and convert you. What the hell? You didn't even say Lisa. Well, I suppose you would say that, but don't worry, I'm not going to try and convert you or anything. Huh? After a long silence, all I could manage was a puff of laughter through my nose. According to my faith, all, all I'm to do is let lost sheep rest for a short time. It's the same thing for that girl on your back. Okay, this is the part of religion I like. Being helping people. Not getting in the business, as it were to say. Uh, you know, but forcing you to think one way, I'm not okay with that. I had already forgotten I was carrying Hagena. Hey, we're here, so I'm gonna let you down. Hurry, hurry up. I don't know how kind of voice to give her. Hurry up and let me down. I felt a flash of anger, but since I was holding onto both her legs, I figured in the end I was it was a very natural thing to say. Though I was overwhelmed by the temptation just to let her go, I bent my knees slowly and let her down, one foot at a time. The hell? Oh, okay, I thought her neck was scarred, but I think that's just... What the fuck? Terrible shadowing? What the hell? That's off-putting, too. That shadowing should be better. <laughs> okay, uh... Are different, at least. You can stand? 
Hagenau was silent, but she seemed to be amazed that she was standing. What a strange woman. So, what were we saying? Oh, she's a runaway too? Right, same idea with Serilute. This place is a crossroads, and so according to the teachings, I have a bucket for washing feet and a cup of cold water ready to give. That's really nice. Feet? Water? I made a face as if to as if to say, what is this woman even talking about? Lisa saw it and instead of getting angry, she breathed a disappointed sigh. Do you happen to be born and bred on the moon? Yes? Is that a problem, lady? Uh, yes, but so what? After I asked this back at her, Lisa shook her head disappointed. She was making fun of me. What? Was that what it was? I glared at her. Lisa looked towards the statue of the dude stuck on the cross, placed her hands together, and bowed her head. <laughs> Alright. I am El Diablo. And rightly so. Oh lord, you have brought... Oh, you have brought upon me a great trial. Alright, um... Oh lord. Oh lord, you have... I forgot her voice. Oh lord, you have brought upon me a great trial. Then, as she said this, she made a strange gesture with her right hand in front of her body. As I worried what she was doing, Lisa, f Lisa faced me and began to speak. For now, why don't you take a bath? I'm not trying to be Hagena. Wait, for now, why don't you take a bath? I'm not trying to be Hagena, but you are a little dirty. Being told this to my face was actually a bit embarrassing. Well, sorry. As I said this trying to hide my embarrassment, Hagena, who had been watching the situation quietly, picked up where Lisa left off. In fact, in fact, you smell terrible. After that, I began to be especially conscious about my own body. Being homeless can do that, I guess. I, I actually understand that. Okay, uh, uh... The day I realized I was at a far more emotional and innocent age than I had thought. It was the first proper bath I'd had since running away from home and I was on the verge of tears. Both my parents were immigrants from Japan, so soaking in the tub was pretty much a daily tradition. It would be the only luxury my parents enjoyed, if I had to think of any, besides the bonin, making the zibibis, and getting wasted. I don't know, that's what I'd do if I was a farmer. Hey wife, bring out the whiskey. Let's get freaky in the tub. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Okay. You could find water circulating all over the lunar surface, but you definitely couldn't say water was inexpensive because of that. I heard that the reason they made water flow visibly everywhere was because water had a calming effect on the human soul. That is true. Every time I walk by like water fountains or streams or when it rains I feel strangely calm it's, it's nice even if that weren't true I heard that I heard that all but a few places on earth were short on water and then half of the international disputes steamed from water resource issues I think that's in our my near future I live in California and there's been a drought for fucking years? And it's been getting worse every year? <sighs> Even the landlord gave us uh, letters from the governor's office saying to conserve water. And he was like, please conserve water. We're in a drought. We don't have water. Alright. It's, it's precious. It's like... Mad Max. Do not get addicted to water. 
Perhaps the visible presence of water was to put some of the immigrants' anxieties to rest, since they believed that fights over water resources were an everyday occurrence due to their coming from various regions on Earth. Man, if you're going to the moon for water, how fucked is Earth? However, what I was currently soaking in was apparently water siphoned off before the final processing, and thus it was quite cheap. So you're getting unprocessed water? Okay. At the bottom of the tub, I could see pieces of aquatic plants used used for water pur for water purification like I'd see in the waterways. But it wasn't just water that was limited on the moon. Unlike Earth, the moon didn't have vast quantities of various resources. Most of them were created from chemical processing of native lunar materials. Or failing that, imported via the orbital elevator. That's cool. I wonder how that happens because... Okay, so let's, let, me, let me try to imagine that for a moment. So... I've heard of the thing called the or orbital elevator before. It's basically uh, a giant tether strapped to the surface, and then something rides up with another, like a a weight out in out in space, orbiting the Earth at the exact same speed as a rotation of it, right? Or what? I'm so confused. But here, okay, so the, the Earth spins around the moon, so the, the tether would have to be attached to the moon because it's always facing Earth. I mean, the light side of the moon is always facing Earth, so that would be the most logical thing to do was to, to put an elevator on the moon and then have it, you know, stretched out all the way to near the Earth. And, you know, in a zone where satellites and debris would not be. It's not, you know, you get fucked up elevator. All right, enough of that. And ported via the orbital elevator. That's why people said that the government organization in charge of managing the lunar surface had, terri had terribly precise control over the flow of various materials throughout the city. The most important of these was water, and thus the amount of oxygen and hydrogen. Any amount of oxygen could be obtained using the plentiful amount of solar radiation to break down silicon dioxide Sand, in other words, hydrogen, however, could only be obtained via hydrocarbons that only existed at the poles. Hydrogen is too light for the moon's gravity to retain it, and thus naturally occurring hydrogen was quite rare. Carbon could be obtained using the limitless electrical power here to break down solid carbon dioxide shipped in from the orbital elevator. Uh, oxygen could also be obtained from this process, thus killing the two birds with one stone. Nitrogen and the various minerals needed for the growth of plants and animals could only be obtained through chemical pellets transported in through the orbital elevator. This basic knowledge was supposedly taught to all kids in elementary school during science class. That's, that's a really cool science class. Unfortunately, I hadn't really applied myself in school and thus had to learn it much later. Uh, what got me to learn about this was when I had first started seriously trading stocks and wanted to figure out who had the best slice of pie when it came to the various systems on the moon, I had naively thought that investing in the w in that would guarantee smooth sailing and that would be that. I had learned a, a lot while operating under the notion and thus wasn't all the rose tinted stuff they teach you at school. I remember uh, sighing in awe at the systems revolving around the rights tied to the important resources in lunar cities. The public parts were of course controlled by the government, but the most powerful on the civilian side had to be Emerald Industries, which had the civilian rights to the orbital elevator. By the way, if you were wondering about why the company was named after emeralds, it was because a long time ago people said that the moon's core was made, made of emerald. It was originally a maintenance uh, company, but since this was such a complicated piece of machinery, there weren't many uh, qualified guys who could work on it. This was a textbook example of what could happen if uh, they were also quite crafty. The majority of the infrastructure on the moon was under the umbrella of Emerald Industries and its related subs subsidiary companies, 
During the time it took for me to come out of the bathroom, dry myself off and put on the obviously old t-shirt and pants, I must be I must have interacted with the products from 100 to 200 of Emerald Industries various subsidies subsidiaries. This was a totally artificial city, so artificial it could put Las Vegas and Dubai to shame, even though those were lauded as cities with fountains in the desert. I hadn't seen either city with my own eyes, but I had seen footage of them. People on Earth were idiots. I thought candidly to myself. All freshened up? When I came out of the changing room, Lisa was lying back on the sofa. There was a cup of water she'd poured out for me on the table. The changing room connected right into the living room and connected right into the living room. In it was an old and worn sofa set that must have picked up from a dump somewhere, along with a coffee table and a carpet whose corners must have mended countless times. There was no TV, but there was a computer. Also on the coffee table was a multifunction terminal that Lisa had been using just now. What had surprised me was the thick book next to it. It was a rare event to see real books on the moon, where space and resources were limited. Yeah. I figured nobody used paper up here. Everything would be, you know, digital. I had thought until relatively recently that books were simply an application inter interface format. I didn't realize that things that resembled what was drawn on the screen actually existed. People who came from Earth made fun of people who grew up on the moon for things like that. I get it. However, from my point of view, the people on Earth were the ones who had something messed up in their heads, since they still uh, stuffed these ridiculously bulky books into places like libraries. Is it rare to see a real book? I came to see... I came to when Lisa asked me the question. Um, once more she had the multifunction terminal in her hand, most likely reading a book again. Well... Even if I had snapped back saying that I don't know what I don't know, her treating me like some naive idiot would piss me off. And thus, I mumbled my reply while putting on a poker face, but Lisa didn't make fun of me. Well, they certainly take up sp Well, they certainly take up space. They also get dirty easily, so you have to take good care of them. Furthermore, you couldn't really search them. So the digital version is a hundred times better. I instantly realized she was doing this out of consideration for me. It was as if she were some kindergarten teacher who had a good idea of what would cause immigrants from Earth and moonbred kids to get into. A fight. And that is? I pointed to the back of the thick worn book on the table. There were some gold colored alphabet looking characters on the back cover, but I couldn't quite parse them. Bye. <laughs> this was to me the most important book in the this to me this to me was the most important book in the world and I thus brought it with me from earth even though I parted with even though I parted with Julie who had been with me since the day I was born oh she's my pet dog by the way oh my god oh she's my pet dog by the way even if I parted with Julie, I could not bear to leave that book back on Earth. Lisa said the mobile terminal aside and carefully stroked the front cover of the tattered book. Upon seeing that, I flashed back to when I was a naive kid, being patted on the head by my parents' hands, roughened from working outdoors. When did you come here from Earth? We got chased out of our place when I was 11. With that, my parents made the bold move to apply for the lunar immigration. We didn't really have money and thus would have to apply through a commoners category which had ridiculous odds. Well, my parents can my parents' professions were kind of special and since the NOAA system was still in effect, we managed to get placed into a preferential category. 
Ah, oh, that's interesting. So, it was sort of like a lottery being sent up to the moon, just in case stuff on Earth didn't go so well. So, if things don't go well on Earth, or if, you know, everything's still okay on Earth, you could, uh... Hmm, you could still have humanity continue on the moon and then repopulate the Earth from there, right? Okay. Noah system? Ah, uh, it was how people referred to the system for the preservation of multiculturalism. Well, I guess you wouldn't know it unless you were involved with it. Well, there was a story about it in Noah's Ark. Well, there was some legend of oral tradition or teaching or whatever that was talked about how when the world had turned to evil and was destroyed by a huge flood, good people and pairs of animals rode out of the flood in a boat and went on to create a virtuous world after the water receded. Something like that. My parents were both theological scholars. I guess they needed people of that old odd profession as well. This was the first time I had heard the term theological scholar. Lisa picked up a nearby terminal and showed me the dictionary entry. They were apparently people who studied religious teachings. I was truly, I was truly surprised that people who gave up their lives to such useless things were here on the moon. And thus, this book was like my soul to someone like me who had been raised in such a household. There were many authors depend. Oh. And thus, this book was like my soul, to someone like me who had been raised in such a household. There were many authors depending on which chapter it was, but it was mostly written around 2,000 years ago. It's actually the best-selling book on Earth, you know. Um... I, I guess... Yeah... I was raised as a Catholic, but they don't teach you in Catholic school that the Bible was written by a bunch of different people and just sort of stapled together. So a lot of things, you know, written by one guy, hundreds of years later, written by another guy, hundreds of more years later, written by another guy. Uh, events happen, but they're written down like 50 years after it actually happens. So, and they're not true. <laughs> I'm very secular, if you haven't already guessed. But I could see the, the good in having... Um, in having a uh, theological studies as long as it wasn't taken too seriously oh oh I'm oh, sorry <laughs> oh is it that interesting Lisa laughed out loud when I started to show a bit of interest in the book while looking at it <laughs> Well, no, sorry. If you asked me whether it was interesting or not, I'd say it was interesting in its own way. But it isn't really that kind of book. This is called the Bible. Remember the figure you saw in the church? That was the book written by the disciples of the guy pinned up there. This, uh, it's a book of religious teaching, so to speak. They estimate that over one billion copies had been sold. Probably more. A billion copies? It's because it can be found everywhere on Earth. It was trans translated into the words spoken by the people all over the Earth. So, in uh, so in other words, everyone on Earth reads it? Nope. Not even the people who uh, carry it around like it's something to be proud of. They just pick the parts they like and shove it in your face. I'm getting real uh, salty with this. I'm actually, uh, I'll just... Mm. No! It's my let's play, I'll do what I want. <laughs> if only that were the case. A question mark appeared on my face when I heard Lisa's reply. The Earth's... The Earth's population is roughly 6.5 billion, even in an age where 700,000 of those would come to the moon. Roughly a third of the people on Earth couldn't read, and two-thirds had no surroundings where they could sit down and read a book. The remaining fortunate one-third had tons of other forms of entertainment. There were few people reading the Bible nowadays, even among Christians. 
even at the church I attended, there were few people who knew there were four books that comprised the Gospels, and even less people knew the names of the four authors. You probably don't understand how sad the fa this fact is. I know, right? <laughs> ah. Okay, I'm gonna get into this real quick. Uh, during uh, Catholic school, I was, I they you gave you an assignment. I was a, I was a real dick back then. <laughs> I um, I did not like going to that training. It's terrible. So the volunteer teachers <laughs> gave us all an assignment, saying, uh, "Okay, um, pick out a pick out a, a verse from the Bible and read it out loud to the class." So I was just like, you know, skimming through it, skimming through it, skimming through it. And then you come across this passage. Really interesting. There's a lot of thys and thous and shalt nots, shall do's, you know what I mean? And there's this part which goes, Thou shalt not covet uh, thy neighbor's wife. I was like, all right. And then there's this other part that I get even more saucy. I was like, it said, uh, I can't remember, you know, verbatim, word for word, but it said something like, uh, thou shalt not uh, engage in uh, some, uh, sexual activity with thy hand. Thou shalt cut it off. I'm like, so I was like, what? If you uh, touch your own stuff in a form of pleasure, you have to cut off your hand. It's in the Bible. <laughs> it's really there. I can't remember where exactly, but it's there. And, oh man. I got pit. I got, they got, all they did was look at me and go, Hmm. Sit back down, please. <laughs> ah, good, good times. And uh, uh, I, I remember somebody got in my face about this, um, and I was, and they were telling me how they follow all the rules that were written there, and I'm like, and they take their, their text, Bible text, very seriously. And then I was like, what about this part? And then they're like, what? Yeah, it says it right here, and they were like, "No, nah, don't fuck you, they, you, you Satanist pig." And I'm like, "Okay," and I was like, "Oh, I looked it up. Okay, found it. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. I found it, and I was like, here, look at this.'" And the guy was like, "No, no, 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 no. That that's just uh, that's just symbolism. It's not not to be taken literally." But I was like, "How do you take the other parts that you just said to be taken literally, but this part not?" I was like, oh, no, 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 it's, it's what it means, it's what it means, it's what God wants. I'm like, okay, so you just pick, and then I told him, you're just picking and choosing what you want to believe, right? And then he then he got all pissy, and I was like, okay, you know what, I'm out of here, I'm out of here, I, I can't do this. So, you know, me growing up is just not, me and religion are not, not jiving together, you know what I mean? But I, I can respect it, I keep it at a distance, as long as they don't get in my face. Uh, sorry, totally don't have a clue there. Well, well, that's all right. I've already got some heavy. I already got a heavy load due to having it, to carefully watch over this old church. Still, knowledge passes on when people cross paths. Trivia used to refer to wisdom. What? Trivia used to refer to wisdom, and the word's original meaning was that of a three-way intersection, people were would, would cross paths. Trivia? Oh, that's interesting. I had one... Alright, real back. Uh, the one thing I do like about religion was that it compelled people who were already good to do even more good. The, then that's what I like, you know, people helping people. Yeah, that's really good, you know, teaching people to love and care for each other and stuff like that. You know, what would Jesus do? You know, that that kind of thing. But there were a lot of people who use it and for their own gain and for their own for their own everything really. Uh, and those people who are not very nice, not very giving, and don't want to be selfish and stuff like that. They're even worse when it comes to being really, really religious. Because then they think they have uh, 
an excuse to to do the things they do and that's what I don't like and I see that way more than I, I see the good so that, that that's that's why I don't like it so much anyways continuing Oh man, well, I hope it didn't spark a crazy debate out of the bottom. Uh, good thing I don't have a lot of comments on my video. Alright, continuing. I had wondered what... I had wondered what, the, what would be the point in having all these lost people meeting at such an intersection. It was perhaps a sign that I had that I'd realized I should be the shepherd watching over the sheep. A shepherd? I've seen images of sheep being herded by sirens or by sirens and electrical fences before while researching certain potential investment candidates, but how is this related to managers and those to, of those factories? Seeing me totally drawing a blank, Lisa laughed weakly and said, Sorry, it's just a metaphor. I actually haven't seen a real sheep, a shepherd either. I guess it wasn't just a matter of not knowing stuff because I w was born on the moon. I was at least a bit relieved by that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much the type of person people would certainly wonder why I, I came to the moon to do such a thing. Well, well, I do think that. Nisa chuckled at my frank statement. Well, now let's talk about you, okay? Hey, let's learn about me. Yoshi. Uh, since we, since she went to the trouble of saving me from the police, bringing me here since it looked like I had no place to go, and even letting me take a bath, my good character dictated that I answer to her. You are not a good character. Uh, I come from a settlement. I come from the settlement village on the outskirts of the eastern outer district. Uh oh, that's a great place with all the greenery, right? Uh, outsiders all say that. Isn't it just because we're all from the Stone Age? <laughs> well, people who would come to the moon were all city dwellers back when they were on Earth. They missed their greenery. I was, being, I was beginning to feel that I was being blanketed and confused by a high level of logic. You know what? She is way smarter than you. You're just good at... You're just skilled at, you know, stock market crap. Uh... Are the cities on Earth full of greenery then? Well, I guess the way they worked it was kind of bad. Even even on Earth, there wasn't much greenery in the cities for some reason. People were attracted to the natural outdoors from from the times long past, long gone past. Per perhaps it's something ingrained in us. Aren't aren't you the same? I was about to refuse her point, but decided against it. In either case, I ran away. F In either case, I went. I ran away from home over there. Okay, your name? Is it okay to ask? Lisa asked me without showing any signs of trying to forcing me. Ooh. Like I'd be able to get away with not answering that if I said no. That's fine if you don't want to. Okay. But it would be a kind inconvenient to call you to call for you, so I'd like some sort of name. The girl you carried on your back, she's called Hagana. It's not her real name. Huh? Well, well, it's not like she doesn't want to open up to me, but she's like a wild animal in that she's very cautious about things. Hagana's originally a word from the language of the Wanderers. Well, actually, does anything come to mind when I use the term Wanderers? No idea. I guess it's to be expected, but I see I guess the moonbred being fr free from the earth had this kind of meaning. Uh... Huh? S sorry, talking to myself again. It's the first time talking to a kid who was born and bred on the moon. Huh, really? People born and bred on the moon... People born and bred on the moon, there's still probably not even 10,000 or so. 
People working in Newton City said that it was due to the fact that many people weren't able to have children. Whoa, really? Oh yeah, you know, astronauts can't get it up. I don't know how they figure that out, but it's weird. Most of the people who came from Earth were 10 years old at the youngest when they rode the orbital elevator. There was a huge difference in gravity between the moon and the Earth, and thus there were issues with their bodies. Of course, to them, Earth was their birthplace, and the common sense they possessed came from there as well. Well, this really looks like trivia. The whole, the whole path's crossing and exchanging wisdom thing. Lisa smiled with satisfaction while uttering those words. If that girl... If that girl clad in black, Hagena, could be considered strange, then Lisa must also be strange for helping and harboring me. Anyhow, even in this day and age, living on the moon, she's all, the, she's all into religion and cherishes her real books. To put it bluntly, I wondered if she was a social outcast. However, a pro on the moon probably. I know a lot of people would find comfort in going to some place like this. I don't know. However, I had my favorable impression of Lisa, even though she didn't seem to take part in the competitions that raged on this competitive, raged on in this competitive city. It was true she wasn't pushing ahead, but it didn't feel like she was falling back either. Even in this low gravity environment, Lisa appeared to have her feet planted firmly on the ground. She looked to me as if she enjoyed just living her life. I was a bit moved seeing that people like that actually existed. I had, had thought that there were three types of people on the moon. The rough and crude from my village who were, who were refined only in speech, the decadent people from the outer sections who couldn't be helped, and the residents of Newton City who took advantage of the low gravity to jump up, up to lofty heights. These were, the, these were my thoughts as I looked at Lisa, who was smiling happily to herself. It feels like she could at least be trusted. Uh, Yoshi Haru. Huh? Kawaura Yoshi Haru. Oh, is that your name? It's my real name, so if you report me, they'd quickly notify my parents. After that, after my blunt answer, Lisa looked at me for a moment. Then a smile spread over her face. I see. I got it. Well then, how about just how? Fucking Yoshi would have been better. <laughs> All right, whatever. What the hell's my full name before I forget it? Uh, Shiharu. How is that hell? Hell? Even if I called you by your first name, wouldn't it really narrow down who you were? It would be obvious you were the kid of Japanese immigrants if it were just hell. If it were just hell, then that wouldn't be an issue. Of course, that wasn't really any reward for turning someone in, but the, in fact, the fact that someone didn't do it from the get-go was also a bit creepy. This was a good thing for me, but suspicion had become a daily thing in my three months of wandering around. Uh, Lisa noticed the look of suspicion on my face and said, <laughs> Well, if this were Earth, I could just say the Lord's, will, the Lord's will be done and smile, and everyone would accept it. Uh, totally have no clue what you're talking about. Well, that's true. This is the moon after all. Although sometimes I start getting the urge to put one of those on. That's what... That's what she... That's... That was that... What? The, that was what she said. And I wondered what she meant, though. From her expression, she'd probably just dodge the question if I asked her. However, it pains me that it's Hagama who'd fit better in them. It looks like my color's too light. 
Lisa talked to herself while brushing her hair with her fingers. It wasn't on Hagen's level. But I th thought she had beautiful straight hair. Back in the village, everyone placed blonde women on a pedestal, but I kind of like girls with deeper colored hair. I don't know, it's really light to me. It's fucking, you know, pink. Alright. Are you talking about Hagena? To put it bluntly, someone who's in front of me right now. Oh. Speaking of which, I wonder what that girl's doing right now. It's almost time to sleep, but perhaps she wasn't planning on taking a bath. And right after she said that, supposedly there were only Lisa and Hagena here, so logically it must have been Hagena. So there was no reason to be surprised, but I did get a shock when I spotted Hagena coming in from the dark hallway. Okay. The tone just, just shifted. Just what the. I'm stopping here. <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh, well. Okay. Maybe if. Ah. Uh, what the. F I'm surprised the game went this far. I mean, usually you'd get, you know, kind of hints of how perverted a game's gonna be in the first, like, 10, 15 minutes, but this is just, it went from talking about, uh, you know, Jesus helping people to full-on panty shots and a little girl. I mean, what, what the f- Ah, uh, no, ah, uh, they're the same age, but still, ah, uh, what the fuck? Alright, I'm stopping it here. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Thank you and goodbye.